mighty God, Jesus Christ, was given to die for us, and for his sake God does forgive us all our sins as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please join in the opening hymn, number 62, in the books in front of you.
infant son, the holy name of Jesus, to be a sign of our salvation. Plant in every heart the love of the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. First reading is from the 63rd chapter of the prophet Isaiah. I will recount the gracious deeds of the Lord, the praiseworthy acts of the Lord, because of all that the Lord has done for us, and the great favor to the house of Israel that he has shown them according to his mercy, according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he said, surely they are my people, children who will not act deceitfully. And he became their savior in all their distress. It was no messenger or angel, but his presence that saved them. In his love and pity, it was he who redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Psalm 8 in your insert responsibly. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You whose glory is chanted above the heavens, out of the mouths of infants and children. You have set up a fortress against your enemies, to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what, what are your mortals, mortals that, that you should be mindful of them, human beings that you should care for them? them? Yet you have made them little less than divine, with glory and honor you crown them. You have made them the glue of the Lord's hands, you have put all things under their feet. All flocks and cattle, even the wild beast of the field, the, the birds of the air, air, the fish of the sea, and whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all of the earth. Our second reading is from Paul's letter to the Hebrews, the second chapter. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, here am I and the children whom God has given me. Since therefore the children share flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared the same things, so that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. For it is clear that he did not come to help angels, but the descendants of Abraham. Therefore he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every respect, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make a sacrifice of atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself was tested by what he suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Please rise and pray.
now after they have left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, Out of Egypt I have called my son. When Herod saw that he had been tricked by the Magi, he was infuriated, and he sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem who were two years old or under, according to the time that he had learned from the Magi. Then what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be consoled, because they are no more. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who were seeking the child's life are dead. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was ruling Judea in place of his father, Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee. There he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Grace and peace to you in the name of the infant Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, I already said it, but Happy New Year and Happy Seventh Day of Christmas. Because for us as people of Christ Church, we know the season of Christmas is not over. Not so for everyone, though. The morning after Christmas, as we travel our neighborhood, my husband and I <coughs> walk by several houses with Christmas trees at the curb. A reminder that in our secular world, Christmas is about the day and everything that leads up to it. It is not about what comes after it. But we know the story is just beginning to unfold <clears throat> as we travel with Joseph and Mary and the child Jesus, realizing their life is never going to be the same, where the precious gift of a child is forever altering who they thought they were. Mary and Joseph have remained in Bethlehem and are receiving visitors, namely, Three magi, men of science, who had been watching the stars and inquiring about the place of the new king of the Jews. Well, hearing about it and becoming fearful and threatened, King Herod, along with all of Jerusalem, sends these learned men on a mission to find the baby king and report back so he could visit the one who will shepherd the people of Israel. But upon the Magi visiting, they are overwhelmed by the stars and the joy that they find in that little family. And they offer their chest of riches. And then they, too, listen to a dream that tells them not to return to Herod, but to go to their own country by another route. Friends, from the beginning, angelic visions and dreams have filled all who are part of Jesus coming into the world with messages from God of hope and strength, protection and promise. All through the season of Advent and now in the season of Christmas, we hear the words, do not fear. It is pronounced to all who are part of God's entering into our human existence. All those human fears of our ancestors, they are being quelled and reassured. But, but know that those fears that they had, they are real. They're not groundless or without merit. Because imagine being a woman 
who was pregnant in a society which does not look favorably on such things, or being the soon-to-be husband of a young woman, or shepherds guiding and guarding sheep in a field who were suddenly called by holy messengers to go to them on God's mission and word. Or then there's John the Baptist who awaits execution, having insulted and pronounced righteous judgment on the ruler of the world. Fear is real for all of these people, and it can be immobilizing. It often causes people to delay action or to take no action at all because we're so afraid of the outcome. Sometimes when we're fearful, we're even afraid to talk about it because of what might happen when things are revealed and what others might say about it. Think of the person who is afraid to let others know of a different sexual preference or a youngster who doesn't want to go to college or do some other vocation that a parent or a guardian desires for their life. It could be fearful to stand up to a bully or an abusive spouse or significant other or even a family member. Or maybe, like me, it could be fear of being in deep water that is rooted in a near drowning when I was in grade school. To this day, when I get in deep water and I can't touch my feet to the bottom of the water source, mild panic sets in until I take myself to more shallow water. Yes, it's that lack of control, wanting solid ground, and remembering what almost happened all those years ago that causes my anxiety and fear, even though I can swim well enough to get myself to safety. I do think that most often our fears are related to wanting control or a desired outcome of our own choosing. But we know that life and our faith, they're not like that. Still, we are surprised when they are not. Or maybe we just don't like it. It's not the Magi who are fearful but they are being warned in a dream. And God is entering Joseph's dreams once again. This time, it's not reassurance, but rather an angelic message to leave the country so the child Jesus is not harmed. Little do his parents know of the great harm that will come to him a mere 30 years later. For now, though, death is being thwarted. But King Herod is fearful, but he is not deterred. He is bent on finding that child who is threatening his seat of power as savior of the world, and anger fills him as he realizes the betrayal of the Magi. Now, it might be hard for us to imagine a two-year-old or younger child being a king and a threat to political and social power, but it was really quite normal back then. They were helped by powerful courts and advisors, these child kings. They had deep roots in family and wealth, including land. Their status was won by wars and insurrections and conquerors who wanted domination and power. And the threat of someone new upsetting that power base, that structure, it would cause fear and thus reactions of destruction and demolition. After all, what easier way to get rid of the competition than to destroy it? What easier way to diminish a social issue than to shift the focus to some greater problem? Our politicians, sadly, seem to be masters at that, as do some of our media outlets. So are regimes, those with dictators. Iran, who has experienced much tumult and riots these days because of the way women are treated and being held to different standards, they are making efforts 
to shift the focus away, the focus of the world, to something else. Nothing to see here. But there is much to see in the world, my friends, just as there is much to see in this difficult version of scripture that you've heard. And unfortunately, children continue to be the victims of murder, abuse, and scorn. We need to hear this passage. We need to hear it to remind us that the world that Jesus entered into, it was not some idyllic, peaceful scene. It's a place where all is not right, a place with power struggles and oppression, where dictators rule and battles rage and human judgment seems to prevail. The seemingly blissful scene of birth is interrupted with the work of a power-filled king, a warrior who is ruthless and reckless, a dictator who must keep control over the people. What feet or Herod must have had to slaughter children to neutralize that threat to his kingdom? With the loss of lives so young, sadness may fill our hearts, as it should. We may weep as we think of that thoughtless tragedy, just as Rachel weeps over the lost children in Rama. And I know it's easy to get lost in the hopelessness of a violent and turmoil-filled world. And we might, if the story ended there. But Jesus, our hope and our light, is spared under the protective arm of God as Joseph listens to God's message. Mother and child are shielded temporarily from Herod's threat. They are on the run. They are separated from their family and their friends and what they know. They are exiles in Egypt, a foreign land that has not been historically kind or safe for the people of Israel. But we learn that God dwells even in those lands, for the family is protected. Focused on their day-to-day -day survival, they eventually move to a place of safety for now in Nazareth, not yet knowing what the future holds for them as parents. They raise the beloved child, and he becomes known as a Nazarene, a name that means one that is separated. And then so we continue to wait in our world full of separation. We wait and see what will happen to the Holy Family, and we walk that journey with them, beginning in that cave stable witnessed by lowly shepherds, overseen by a mother and father of uncertain means, and scientists who have angelic visions and dreams, and proclamations by the faithful of who Jesus is and will be. We walk and we see and we hear the prophetic voices that have called from the desert, who wears strange clothing and utters words inspired by God. And yes, we hear the fear incited by a king as thousands of innocent children are killed so that his fears can be allayed. We walk, we walk and we see in that journey in faith, knowing that all is not well in the world, but filled with the gifts of the infant king, we can go forward we can go forward with mercy and compassion, love and courage, strength and forgiveness, the gifts of Jesus. Onward we go, living and sharing the good news of great joy that fills our hearts, that transcends all our fears, that conquers death, and that transforms us. For Jesus, 
the name above all names, comes each day into our lives as the dawn comes in the morning, bright and shining and enduring. O oh Lord God, how majestic is your glorious name in all the world. Thanksgiving for Christ coming into the world. We pray for the church, the life of the earth, and the whole human family. Holy God, you have given the church the holy name of Jesus, and in him we are your beloved children. Unite us in mission through the power of his spirit. Make us worthy of the name we bear, the name in which we pray. God of grace, hear our prayer. Renewing God, restore your glory to the earth. 
awaken humanity to our kinship with all living things that depend on your provision. Teach us to care for the earth and safeguard its treasures for those who come after us. God of grace, hear our prayer. Peacemaking God, reconcile the nations, lead those in conflict, in conflict into negotiation, especially in areas of religious or ethnic strife and acts of aggression and violence that are carried out in your name. God of grace, hear our prayer. Delivering God, rescue our siblings in any danger, especially in communities where disaster and disease threaten. Move those in authority to respond with speed and compassion. We pray for the safety of first responders, health care workers, and all who seek to protect us. God of grace, hear our prayer. Healing God, raise up any who are bowed down with illness or sorrow. Deepen our care and concern for one another. We lift to you all who are undergoing transition in relationships, occupation, living situations, or health conditions. Especially today, we remember Billy and Dave, Tim and Lisa, Sabrina, Robert and Rebecca, Davia and Jay, Claire, Shirley, Jen, Denise, Eddie, Phil, Margaret, DJ, Ginny, the family of Jan, Clay and Danielle, Wayne and Darlene, and those we name before you aloud or in the silence of our hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. Saving God, redeem us and grant us eternal peace. We give thanks for the faithful departed who now rest in your undying love, made known to us in Jesus our Emmanuel. God of grace, hear our prayer. Pondering the mystery of eternal love made flesh in Christ Jesus, we commend all for whom we pray to the mercy of God. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share that peace with one another. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
our very lives. We ask you to guide us and move us to share all that you have first provided to us in your holy name and according to your will. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the wonder and mystery of the word and flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn, drawn to love the God whom we cannot see. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on heaven and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and we join their unending hymn. <laughs> Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray.
Thanks be to God. Thank you.